welcome to another episode of Buried Treasures. I've stopped counting them. I'm just going to do them as I feel like it. So, what are we looking at today? A von Neumann, oh, a Turing machine running inside a von Neumann machine in Applesoft Basic. And a bonus, the sieve of Eratosthenes. Wow. Okay, so this is on the Internet Archive, archive.org slash details slash all caps VN Turing. So who was Alan Turing? Well, um, there's a lot of resources on the internet to learn all about him. Um, we owe our lives to him, basically, from World War II. Um, he led the code breakers at Bletchley Park and built uh, had the first conception of a computer. Um, the Imitation Game is a movie about it. There's some historically inaccurate details in there, but it's a good overview to get you familiar with the story of who he was. So, von Neumann took it to the next level. Um, so, there's a lot of info about him, too. Um, a book I'm reading is called um, The Turing's Cathedral. Uh, let's look for that. Yeah, Turing's Cathedral. Yeah, that's what it looks like by George Dyson. Okay. So, what I am doing here, I'm going to run it in Micromate. So, if you want to try this at home, uh, you can either run it online or you can download the disk image, 140K DOS 3.3 image, and it runs in Applesauce. Applesoft! Okay, everything runs in Applesauce now. Okay, let's uh, go to Micromate. And uh, let's look at this von Neumann machine. It has a small instruction set of nine instructions. It has a hundred bytes of memory in decimal. And um, so like this 390 is load register from memory 90. And 90 has a 50. So it could follow all these instructions and uh, Turing's idea was if you had a tape and you had either a mark or a blank on the tape, here I'm using a one as a mark and a zero as a blank, and then you had a machine that moves the tape head and follows instructions based on the state and you jump to different states, it can do something. So here I have two ones, uh, two marks, a blank, and two marks. So I'm simulating addition. So 50 is the address of the start of the tape. And the rules are, um, yeah, so to do an addition on a Turing machine, you look at these and while you have a one, you keep moving right. But when you see a zero, you put a one in there and then you move right. And then you should expect to see ones. If you don't, you halt and you erase the previous bit, uh, previous um, mark on the on the tape so the tape can move bi-directionally and then otherwise you move to the end of the ones until you see a zero and then you erase this last one so let's watch it run I'm just gonna run the program so the program is all these numbers and that was von Neumann's major innovation the stored program concept and you'll see some other features here like this is a constant these are variables and these are actually constants too. So it, when you're playing with this, you could come up with conventions like put your constants starting at 98 going backwards, put your variables either at 90 or 80. And um, so here eventually it jumps down to this code here. And there is self-modifying code in this program. So let's watch it. Okay, so ILC is the instruction location counter and you can see it moving along and um, it is an instruction register, so it refetches and decodes the instruction and executes the instruction based on these rules. So, like a 580 is a jump, if the register equals zero, it will jump down to 80 in a certain condition. That's the end of the program, and it's going to do some self-modification over here. So look, it already filled in the one, that, that zero with a one, and it already erased the last zero, and it halted. So it halted at instruction 88, which is here. That's 89, that's 90. So the program just succeeded and proved that two plus two equals four. 
If anyone tells you that 2 plus 2 equals 5, you're living in the uh, novel 1984. Okay. So let's look at this program a little bit. How is it doing it? So essentially I simulated the different states of the Turing machine. So, and it restores the uh, original state at the end. So all the self-modification, it can run again. So let's just try a different problem. Let's do a uh, modify memory and let's do two plus, let's do a four plus two. All right, so, uh, yeah, so see, you could also use this to learn a lot. Like think about the test cases for this application. Like what about zero plus zero, zero plus one, one plus zero. So you can code those, but let's make it simple. Let's do uh, one plus two or one plus one equals two. That took a lot for mathematics. Yeah, let's do that 50. All right, so let's do a 51 and put a zero and then a 53 we'll put a zero. Okay, so we want to know what is one plus one. And uh, there's a famous proof that one plus one equals two when mathematics was trying to prove that it was consistent. The uh, spoiler, mathematics is not consistent and it's all related to Turing's uh, proof of uh, you cannot programmatically decide whether a program, any arbitrary program, will halt or not. Okay, let's run this. Uh, 1 plus 1 equals 2, just to prove that the state is left in a usable condition at the end of the program that it can restart and rerun. So if you think of it like a function, I wonder, is this called idempotent? Now, there's some uh, computer science term that you can re-enter. Um, it escapes me right now. But here, we just proved that 1 plus 1 equals 2. So we have a useful Turing machine. Now, before I talk about what these and look at this code, think about this. Um, like, these four bytes can be the number... 390 billion, 191 million, 410,710. So a program can be a number. It could be a very large number, like these 99 <laughs> instructions, which is essentially the state of a machine. It could be a uh, 2 to the 300th. No, it's 10 to the 300th, I guess. Uh, 10, yeah because it's three, yep, 10 to the 300th possible programs, and they could be enumerated. So like say at zero, you start with a zero. Well, that means halt with return code zero. Then you could put a one in there, halt with return code one, and you could assume that everything else is zero after that. So there are a hundred different one byte programs and they all halt. Now, then you go to 100. So what is 100? Add memory 0 to your register. Well, your register could have anything. It's undefined at the start of the program. Or you could assume it's 0, but you're going to add the contents. So you're going to turn it into 100, and then you're going to halt, assuming zeros are afterwards. So then you could add any other memory. So then like 101, if it's zero, you're going to add zero to the register and it'll be zero. So think about this. Um, how many, if you enumerated all the possible programs, um, you could theoretically, like even just like the f two bytes, like what, how many programs can you write with two bytes and what would they do? And would they do anything useful? Um, that definition of useful is interesting. Now think about evolution. If it's random uh, cosmic rays impacting DNA, well, DNA is a code with four letters, T, A, G, C, which represent chemicals. And there's also tertiary structure program uh, for proteins and there's epigenetics as well. Um, so it's not perfect, but um, Douglas Hofstadter in his book, Goidel Escher Bach, um, he talked about, uh, he created a game called Typogenetics with rules 
for manipulating symbols as if they were genetic codes and how you would fold proteins based on rules. And it's a pretty cool little game to play to understand how code is uh, transcribed by ribosomes. So we have MNRA shots, be careful. Um, so, um, yeah, so he goes through the whole transcription and uh, building new DNA copies of itself. So, like, one possible goal is to make a program that makes a copy of itself. Like, uh, read address 0, store at 50, read address 1, store at 50. Okay, so here you can play with Turing machines. Um, now, like, what is the limit of this Turing machine? Well, how much free memory do we have here? Well, it's uh, 30 bytes. Yeah, 30... Um, well, we could say words, because here a word is from 0 to 999. And like uh, there are rules like less than 500 means positive. If you want to use sign uh, to check if things are positive or negative. Um, so like 999 would be negative 1. Okay, so what do we do here? Um, yeah, so you can do testing, like thinking about all the conditions. You could understand self-modifying code. So like here is a five, okay, that is like a 424. So store whatever you have in your accumulator into address 24, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's creating a 451 instruction, which means store in address 51. Yeah, so it's actually self-modifying the code in order to do indirect addressing. So let's look at this a little bit. So 390. Load register from memory 90, that's the 50. Okay, 191, add 91. We'll add the 300 to that because we want to create a load. And 410, store it at 10, and then jump to 10. 710 is an unconditional jump. All right, so like that's your initialization of your Turing machine. Now you're in state 10, whatever you want to name these states. So 350, so let's do this manually like desk checking so it's another skill to do a desk check and see what it would do so load 90 which uh you're always going to start with a 50 because the if you run the program to the end it'll reset and another thing to think about like should you do this initialization at the beginning of the program and then if you had to relocate this program yeah all the things that would have to change like all the hard references and the self-modification references, because here we're not using an assembler. This is machine code. All right, so let's play with this. So 390, we're going to load a 50 in address. Okay, 390 is uh, load the accumulator with a 50. 191, we add 300 and 410. So let's change 10 to a 350. Okay, so you have to modify memory. Address 10 to 350. Okay. Now uh, jump. So let's um, do this 50. We're going to do the 1 plus 1. Okay. Oops. 50. We want a 1. And then it, it increments. You hit enter 51. We'll put a 0. And 52. We'll put a 1. All right. 99 to exit. Okay. So. And uh, like, say you wanted to save this test case, you can save it to an executable text file, which I'll show you when I do the Serva Veritastenes. Okay, so let's desk check this program. We got a 350 in here. We did that. Now we jump to 10. 350 means load from 50. So we load a 1. 520, jump if it's equal to 0 to state 20. Well, it's not equal to 0. We're going to have a 1 in the register because we loaded it. So 390, load register from 90. So load the 50. 199, add 99, which is a constant of 1. You can't change that, even if you modify memory. That's uh, what's needed for this thing to function. OK. And yeah, there's no immediate, no, no load accumulator immediate. So that's a way of getting a 1 in there. And you could put any other constants you need in memory. So this is also about budgeting your memory. Yeah. And uh, see, in the olden days, 
uh, the hackers at MIT, when they got their hands on a machine, they would try to bum instructions. They would try to find how, what's the least number of instructions that you need to do this program or any specific specified program. And there's also the concept of a spec for this, like documenting the limitations. Like this can actually add um, any two numbers up that add up to 28 or less. And I've tested it for the 0 plus 0, 0 plus 1. So those are edge cases. So there's a lot you can learn just from playing with this. All right, 350, uh, 520, 390. Okay, load 90, um, add 99, add 1. So we've gotten the 50, we add 1 and store it in 90. Okay, so we're going to change 90 to a 51. Okay, and 700, jump to zero, zero. Okay, so we're in a loop here. So we've changed state to state zero now. Okay, so now we load 90, we get a 51. 191, we add 300. So we have a 351, we store it in 10. So go to 10 and store a 351. Okay. And uh, 710, jump to 10. 351, load from 51. Okay, we got a zero. 520, jump if it's zero to state 20. Okay, now we're in a new state. 392, load 92. Zero, one, two, we get a 400. 190, add 90. So 451 is in the accumulator, right? And 424. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, we store the 451, and that's there from the previous location. Okay, we would overwrite that. And one enhancement I want to do is to, um, when you do a self, any store instruction, to show this in inverse as it runs. So I'm going to, uh, this code, yeah, I mean, it could go on GitHub, uh, the disk image. AppleSoft on GitHub, how nice would that be? Yeah, well, we could do it with Xcode. All right, whatever. 390. Uh, load 90, you get a 51 again. Okay, so we've stored that. Yeah, load. Okay, so we've stored at. Uh, oh, store memory at 51. Okay. Yeah, so what do we do? 24 is here. So we've loaded 92, which is 400. Um, we've added 90, 451. We stored it at 24 over here. That's correct. Now 399, load register from 99, 1, and uh, 451, store at 51. So we're going to put a 51, a 1, because we found a 0. So that's the rule for finding a 0 to put, put a 1 in there. Okay, now um, we did that. Now 390, load from 90. We have a 51, 199, add 99, add, add a 1 to whatever is in 90. So that's a 52, and store it in 90. So now we do a 90, 52. OK, and jump to 30. OK, so now we're in state 30. So this would be a table in a Turing machine of each state and what to do. OK, so 390, load. 90 with a 50. Okay, so we have a 52 in the accumulator. 191, add 91, 300. So we have a 352, store it at 40. Okay, so we have to change 40 to a 352. Okay, and jump to 40. All right, 352 means load from address 52, 0, 1, 2, and we get a 1. 580. Is it equal to zero? No. So we're going to go on. Okay, if it was a zero, when we get here, we're going to jump down to 80, but we're going to stay in state 40. Now 390, load, register from memory 90, which is a 52. 199, you're going to add one. That could be an increment. <laughs> All right, so 390, load. Yeah, 52 plus one is 53 and store it in 90. So we go to 90. We make it 53 and jump to 30. All right. So now we're back in state 30. We load 90. It's a 53. 191. 
we add memory 91, which is 300, to 53, and store it in 40. So we're going to change 40 to a 353. Look at all that self-modifying code. And jump to 40. Now 353, we load register from 53, which is the 0. Okay, now 580, it is 0, so we jump down to 80. Now we're going to end our program, but we have to erase the previous marks. So we're at 53, pointing to this 0. We have to go back and make that a 0. So load 90, 353. 299, subtract 1 from 53. Okay, now in machine language in the Apple, you have to watch your carry flag. Uh, here, I don't think there's a carry flag. You'd, you'd have to detect, like, if it's uh, negative. So, <laughs> okay. So to detect something is negative, like, you jump away if it's equal to zero and jump away if it's positive, and then you know it's a negative number. <laughs> okay. So, 390, 299, we have uh, subtracted 1, and 192, we're going to add... Okay, so we take 53, minus 1 is 52, and we add 92, 0, 1, 2. We're going to make a 4, 52, and store it at 85. Oh, boy, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we, yeah, we would store a 452 here. Then 398, load 98, which I'm going to say is a constant 0. I'm going to keep that as the constant 0, and that's a good idea. Uh, so then... 393, yeah, you load a 0 and store at 90. Okay, so that is setting us up. Oh, okay, 3 load from 93, 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's like my uh, saved starting point. So I'm going to store 50 at 90. 90 and uh, 50. Now, when did I erase the mark? 452. 0, 1, 2. Okay, so I forgot to do that. Okay, so let's uh, just hit enter here. So what we're doing here, 192, 0, 1, 2, we're creating a 400 instruction, a store instruction to self-modify. 485, um, yeah, we, we created the 452 here. Now 398 was uh, load a 0 and store it at 452. So 0, 1, 2, so we have to change 52 to a 0. And now we have the result of 2. And now we reset for the next run, 393, which is this constant here. So these three are constants, which really uh, convention going forward would be to put them here. And then your variables either here or starting there. OK, so um, yeah, so now um, 90 gets a 50 and 91 okay so we're 99 to when you're done so now we have proven desk checking this program okay so you could play around let's do uh, like 1 plus 0 just to see how that works modify uh, 51 with a 0 and let's watch it run and run it Okay, there is a single step mode as well, which I'll briefly show you next. So here we're going to see 1 plus 0, so it detects the 0, and now it's going to go to the next thing and detect, is there a 1? Okay, if no, it's going to go back, and it's going to erase that 1, and 1 plus 0 equals 1. Okay, so the 1 plus 0 equals 1, and 0 plus 1 equals 1, so that works. 0 plus 0 equals 0. Okay, so um, yeah, let's do a step mode. Let's try this. For 50, we're going to make a 0. Okay, so modify 50 with a 0, and 51 with a 1, and let's do single step. Okay, 3 single step and five to run okay so now step is the space bar or any other key escape gets you out to the menu and uh, return lets you just fly and continue executing um, i don't have any breakpoint functionality in here that's a future enhancement so let's run it again in step mode so now we always start at address zero 
that's the rule here. So you'd always you'd put a jump to wherever you want to start if you want to start somewhere else. So you're starting with a zero whenever the program starts up. 390. Okay, so three load register 90. So there's a fetch, a fetch cycle to get the opcode. So your opcode is a 3xx and your um, data is 90, which is a register ref a memory reference, and it loads the register with your 50. So there's only one register in this machine. So let's spacebar, step. Okay, and there is input and output if you want to play around, uh, like reading input, uh, yeah, like text and outputting text or, uh, all right. So now we're at instruction one. So there's a, a bump of the program counter hardwired into the circuitry. Okay, instruction location counter is what's used here. And instruction register is an internal circuit which retrieves from memory and stores it in flip-flops. So the one means add, then you have to decode the instruction and send the data to another circuit. So your register gets to be 350 because you're gonna add register 91, which is a 300, and you're gonna add it to the accumulator, which you've loaded a 50 previously. So that's the, this is always the result after executing the instruction. I don't show the separate fetch and execute cycles, but I show the results. Okay, now we uh, state step. We're at the 410. Okay, we've loaded the 410 from address two and the register is still 350, 410 modified address 10. So it's done that already. So in this case, whenever I have a four, I'm gonna to wanna to put this in inverse. All right, step again. Okay, so the three, um, yeah, the, the AppleSoft, it's um, automatically processing the jumps. So it jumped to 10 and we're at instruction 10. So I wrote the, this original code years ago and they just uh, bringing it up to date. So now 350. Okay, we got um, the, the value of 10. We have a <clears throat> 350 in our register. We step again. Okay, now what happened here? Where we load 350, 50 has a zero. Okay, so now, uh, yeah, so the jump brings you to that and then the spacebar executes. So there's some inconsistency in the display. Okay, now 11. It did a 520 and it jumped to 20 because now we're at 20. So that was a little fast, but uh, single step didn't show all that. So your branches and jumps happen automatically. Okay, but uh, it's pretty useful. So three, we're at 20, 392. Okay, so your 92 is a 400. Uh, three load from Okay, we didn't execute this yet, so now we execute it, we should get a 400, and we got it. Step again, 21, we have a 190, and register is 450 after it executed it. So what was 190? Add 90 to register. So we had a 400, we added 50, we have a 450. Okay, register 22 is a 424, okay. So, uh, yeah, for a uh, store at address 24, which we did here. Okay, so we self modified future code. Step again. Okay, 23, 0, 1, 2, 3, 399. We retrieve a 399, it has, and the register has a 1 after it loads register 99. Okay, step again. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 450. Okay. Um, yeah, four is a store at 50. So we're going to store what? Okay, register has a one. Store at 50. Uh, let's see. So after you're tracing this a while, you, you, yeah, I mean, this is good for debugging your code. So 390, load 90, uh, 199. I'm getting impatient here. So 51. Okay, so add 51. We get a 1. Uh, and a 490. Uh, we store 51 at 90. And uh, 
390, we're at address 30 now. So yeah, on your own, you could step through all these states, 31, 32, 40. Yeah, you know, like how, how much code does it have to execute to actually do one plus one? So there you get into cycles if you want to do cycle counting. And then does self-modifying code help you deal with cycles? <laughs> when you're making little ticks on the speaker. So here's 30. Yeah, you could have delay loops in here. And uh, 32. Yeah, because what's interesting about computer music, it was a side effect of um, some uh, little noise that the machine made or some pattern in radio frequency interference picked up on a radio. And music is just loops and uh, either clicking a speaker on or off and uh, at different frequencies. So yeah, it's fascinating to study that. That's also in the book Hackers. All right, 352, 40. Uh, we're at 40, 352, we load 52, and we get a zero. So now we gotta figure out how to end, get out of here. So 80, we've just jumped down to 80. 390, we load a 52. Okay, and we get, uh, we load that, and we have 81. Okay, 299, we subtract one, we get 51, and we store it at 51. So now we've stored, you know what, 83, 485. Okay, we're going to modify 85 to 451. And then 398, we are going to load 98, which is a zero, and store it at 51, which we just did. And now we have our result. And 86, we, um, 6, 7, 8, no. yeah, so 393. We load 93, which is our saved starting point of the tape head, and store it at 90. And then we're back to normal. Okay, so now let's look at a little bonus on this disk. Catalog. Okay, so this is DOS 3.3. Micromate's a little bit slow in doing this catalog, but it'll come up in a second or two or three. Okay, here's our catalog. It's a System Master disk, and there's some text files. Like um, you could execute those text files, and it will uh, load a different program. So here's one I finally got working called Civ, exec Civ, and exec reads text from a text file and sends it to AppleSoft. So like it loaded the von Neumann program and modified some statements in it and now it loaded this code. So you don't have to type this all in. Okay, now let's run it. So what we're gonna do is a sieve of Eratosthenes. So here we start with all these numbers up to 50 and to create a sieve of Eratosthenes to find prime numbers, you start at two and you cross out all multiples of two. So I'm gonna just start it running. And uh, you could follow this code and see where it is. So that's what's useful is knowing where you are. You are now on 60. So we jumped to 50 to start, and then um, it's now executing code at 60, and it just crossed out the numbers 4, 6, now it's going to cross out 8, then it's going to cross out 10, and it's going to go through all the multiples of 2. Now the tricky part of this is what do you do? How do you detect the end so you don't trash your code by overwriting it with zeros? <laughs> and then, so the, to detect the end, I need to know where to stop. So the 49 is a marker. And then you have to subtract um, to figure out where the 49 goes. Uh, it, are you past 49? So like here you're at 17, which is an address pointer. 19 is an address pointer to 20. So when this gets past 49 or equal to 49, you're going to want to stop. Now, it only needs to go up to 7 because 7 times 7 is 49. And that will, that, see, the 2 and the 3 and the 5 find all the primes except for 49. 
it's when you get to 7, it's going to step through 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, and then 49. It'll find that and cross it out, and then it will be done. But I didn't program anything to check for done, and it just so happens that there's a side effect that puts a zero in one of these instructions and makes it halt after the 7. So, uh, fun stuff. Yep. So like uh, 49 plus 7 is 56. So there's a bug in here. We execute 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It makes that a 0, and then when it executes it the next time, it halts. And it does what I want it to. But that bug could go undetected for years. And that's what all these security flaws are. If there's any bug in code that, uh, like, can does not handle a buffer overflow properly or uh, allows um, executable code to be downloaded. Okay, now watch this. So 58, where we've reached 50, okay? And now we are going to figure out what to do next. So just watch this number here. So we increment to a three and uh, then we find a five. So we had to um, yeah, figure out what's the next prime Oh, no, no, 5 is 6, so this is less than, so it's going to 9 and then 3s, so 15 is going to get crossed out. 11, okay, so that 14 means it's a 15, and that's now 0, and then 18, um, then 21 is going to get crossed out next, so... Um, yeah, the 20 is address 20, which is 21, so now we crossed out the 21, so now it's crossing out the multiples of 3. Okay, and uh, yeah, so you can see the loops that it's in. It's in the 50s and the 60s most of the time. Okay, jumping back to 54. So I've by jumping back to 54, I could safely overwrite address 50 because that's no longer needed. Um, that was uh, to load address 1, which was the starting point, the 2. Uh, so this is undocumented code which you may inherit one day. Ha ha ha. Or I may leave some for you to debug one day. All right, so here we talk about legacy code, code without tests. Yeah, this is great. So here, you'd always need to go back to a starting image. So make sure you have backups of everything you need before you make changes. So in this system, you would have to save the state you'd have to load a good state, make some changes, and save that new state so that you can always go back to that in case you screw up something by running a test which overwrites your code or does something bad. So, thinking about genetics and DNA, well, what happens in a mutation? Like, if you have... Do you really have uh, 10 to the 30th, <laughs> 10 to the 300th <laughs> uh, combinations of DNA, uh, every possible ex execution code? And this is just for a 100-byte memory computer. Uh, all right, so now we're crossing out multiples of five. I mean, it makes you think, what is there intelligent design who created cells and uh, animals and bodies? Or could it all be random given billions of years? Is billions of years enough? That's, uh, Darwin thinks so. But what does he know? Uh-oh. Let's not get political on this podcast. <laughs> but I want you guys to think. Think for yourselves. And this will help you think. Uh-oh, uh, yeah, I'm crossing out multiples of 7. I'm at 35. Okay, and i got to watch this 49 get crossed out. 41 is 42. 48 is 49, and it becomes a 0. And we have the prime numbers from 2 through 51. So 51 is not a prime, because 3 divides into it. And now you're going to see me crash my code, which I just did here. And we're at 78, 79. We jump back to 68. And then we're going to jump to 50 
Uh, 69. Yeah, now we're trashing code all over the place. We go to 11, which is the next prime number, and it jumps back to 55. So after the 7, it has to search forward to find the next prime. And now, um, since we've trashed this with um, the uh, 49 to 56, it gets here, and at 55, it halts. Okay? So... An exercise for the reader, you have enough memory down here to figure out how to prevent that and keep it in a good state. Because now if we try to run it again, we've trashed our system. Okay, but we have our prime numbers from 2 through 49. All right, so enjoy. And uh, 7, um, you can list this program and modify it and do whatever you want. Um, it's on the Internet Archive. Maybe for Kansas Fest, I'll do something uh, to put it in GitHub and enhance it a bit. But this is a really good way of understanding machine code, machine language. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so the um, data statements here get modified by the executable text file. OK, I don't know if I have a read text or write text, a way of reading the text file here. We'll check. Okay. Uh, numbers. Uh, let's try another one. Exact numbers. Okay, what I did with the numbers is to give you a starting point. If you want to just load an image which has all the numbers up to 99. Okay, so if you're doing something else with primes, or maybe you want the primes up to 60, can you write two, two, 20 bytes of code that uh, do a prime sieve? Ah, that'll keep you up at night. Okay. Okay, von Neumann hello, von Neumann blank. Yeah, if you want a blank one, execute it. That's just a way of blank. You want to start with a blank machine, all zeros, okay, yeah, and a 1 in 99. So if you want to start from scratch and type in every program possible, this is the way you do it. The default is, uh, let's see, exec vn.hello. If you just run von Neumann, it has a demo program that calculates the powers of two. But here's a hello. Okay. And uh, this one takes input, so let's give it some input. K F E S T. Okay, but really the input needs a, f a number at the beginning. You need a five, and then K F E S T. Okay, because it needs to read the length of the string, and then let's run it. Okay, so it's going to read an input tape, and uh, let's see what it does. It's going to read input and write it to the output. So let's give it a second here. It's at input is 83, 84, input is 0. We found the end of our string. That's our, like our end of file marker, and we've halted. Now we have output, kfest. Ain't that cool? So this is a useful tool. Find a good use for it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.